Here's an example problem, a very typical conservation of energy problem. Uh, another one with uh, friction not in the problem. So this is uh, one in which mechanical energy is conserved. We are given some variables. We're given the mass of a ball on a track, a model roller coaster track. Two kilogram ball is uh, going to fall from rest at point A. And we want to know the speed at the bottom, 14 meters below, at point B. This is the kind of problem you should be able to solve without too much trouble, uh, especially by the time you get to test day. This is another conservation of energy problem, 14 meters. As in the case with all of these energy conversion problems, this one potential converting into kinetic energy, we start with a basic statement of the conservation laws. Mechanical energy total is conserved. So mechanical energy total initial conditions equals final conditions. Let's replace initial with A and let's replace final with B as it's a little bit more descriptive for this problem. So we have uh, mechanical energy is potential energy gravitational plus there is no potential energy spring so we don't have to deal with that. Uh, we have kinetic energy at A equals potential energy at point B plus kinetic energy at point B. Now what I always recommend is look for things that you know to be zero. And what are they? There's two quantities that are zero here. Can you spot them? If we expand these quantities, for instance, mgh, one half mv squared, mgh, one half mv squared, we know that at the beginning we start from rest. And starting from rest means that our velocity here is zero. So we know right off the bat the kinetic energy initial is zero. Likewise, there's a quantity that's zero at the end, only it's not involving kinetic energy as this thing is moving at its fastest. So that would be the height. Since the height is zero, the potential energy is zero. So this equation, to uh, the initial one, simplifies. And this often happens in these problems. Initial potential energy equals the final kinetic energy. So the marble starts here at point A, goes down. As it loses potential energy, it loses all of its potential energy by the time it gets to B, in which case all of the potential energy up here has transferred to kinetic energy here. And of course it's the force of gravity that is responsible for doing the work on the object, um, applying the force and moving it through this distance. From here it's a relatively simple calculation to get velocity, you just have, or the speed at the bottom. We can actually take a simplifying step of crossing out masses which is going to make this even easier in the calculation. If for some reason you actually did want the whole kinetic energy here, if you wanted to solve for it, or the potential energy, because uh, when we do this we're not going to be solving for total energy here. But in this problem we're just asked to solve for speed, so that's okay. But if you wanted to solve for total energy we would want to keep the mass in there and multiply mgh and we would get uh, the total energy, which would be the potential energy up at A. So uh, we have GH, we have uh, 10 meters per second squared, or 9.8 uh, times 14 meters, is equal to 1 half times velocity, or speed I should say, at B squared. The math here should not give you any trouble at all. We have uh, 280 meters squared per second squared equaling speed at B squared. And therefore speed is 16.7 meters per second. Let's take a look at a graph of energy versus height. And we're going to plot all of the types of energy, which potential and kinetic. 
and let's start with potential energy. We start at point A at the top with a maximum amount of potential energy. As the coaster falls through a distance X, the potential energy decreases to zero. And note if we reach the halfway point, the potential energy is at the halfway point. Because potential energy is equal to mgh, there's a direct proportion between potential energy gravitational and height, thus the straight line. We'll label this potential energy gravitational. Uh, what about kinetic? Well, before we plot kinetic, if we take a look at the total mechanical energy, initially at point A, this is when the marble's at point A, the mechanical energy is all contained in the potential energy of the object. So being that the mechanical energy must be conserved, this purple line, which is a flat line, indicates what the mechanical energy must be. How would the kinetic energy look on such a graph? At the top, initially, point A, the marble is not moving. Kinetic energy is zero. Now, how would we graph a line such that potential energy, which is in green, plus kinetic energy, which is going to be in red, is equal to the mechanical energy, which is shown in purple? Kinetic energy is going to look like this. So the kinetic energy is doing the opposite of what the potential energy. As the marble falls, it loses potential energy. At the same time, it's picking up kinetic energy. It's losing height. It's gaining speed. The loss in height means a loss in potential energy, gravitational. It's not as high. It doesn't have as much potential energy with respect to the ground. So as it keeps falling further and further and further, it speeds up and up and up. The maximum speed or kinetic energy occurs right at the bottom, which is when the potential energy is at zero. Now if we take a look at what the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is at any height, for instance let's take a, a look at about uh, one tenth of the way down, we have a kinetic energy that's low, we have a potential energy that's a higher value, and if this is 10 percent of the total energy this is 90% of the total energy. Looking further, if we go one-fourth of the drop, the potential energy is about 75% of its original value. The 25% that the potential energy has decreased is exactly how much the kinetic energy has increased. If we look at the midpoint, potential energy has lost exactly half of its value, and that's exactly how much kinetic energy has gained. This trend continues, the potential energy giving way to kinetic energy. And if we go about 90% of the way down the graph, potential energy is only 10% of what it started with. And that 90% that the marble lost in potential energy is now in the form of kinetic energy. It's moving really fast. At the maximum, we have lost 100% of the potential energy. Potential energy is at 0% of its original value. Every bit of that potential energy, when mechanical energy is conserved, every bit of that potential energy is now in the form of kinetic energy, which is shown here at the end of the graph. So when you're looking at energy curves involving potential energy gravitational, because potential energy is directly proportional to the height, you get straight lines on this graph. The key here, the important thing to realize is as mechanical energy is conserved, we have a change in one type of energy and if one decreases, the other one increases. It doesn't always have to be potential energy decreasing and giving away to kinetic energy. It could be the opposite as you're going to see in the next problem.